We'll just jump right in. It's been a minute since I recorded, man. Um, and I'll just have you guys introduce yourselves a little bit, and then we've got some fun questions and all that good stuff. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm Asia Muhammad. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I don't even, I honestly don't even know my rankings right now. I think I'm like 40 something in dubs. Um, and we're just in Destin, Florida right now at Alexa's house training before we go to US Open. That's awesome. First of all, I didn't even get to introduce the podcast. But I love how eager you are, Asia. Thank you. And we're no just going to go with it. So welcome to Talk Tennis. Here we are with, with Asia Muhammad and Alexa Garachi, two badass doubles players on the WTA <laughs> tour. And you just heard Asia say, it's so funny because I'll like research what your guys' rankings are. And like, I'll just kind of like, you don't even know, but I like promote you all the time. Um, your ranking's better than that right now. <laughs> so a lot of times no one knows that. The other day I told someone their ranking and they're like, oh, I didn't know it was that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If my singles ranking, we don't need to talk about that right now. So <laughs> go ahead, Lex. Yeah, your turn. But, um, yeah, I'm Alexa Garachi. I'm from Destin, Florida. Um, I am from the U.S., but I also play for Chile. I play under the Chilean flag because um, my dad is from there. So I have dual citizenship. And yeah, I am 32 years old, doubles player. And yeah, it's funny. Asia and I have been, uh, we're together in Destin right now and, uh, we've been friends for like, we were talking about it the other day, like, like 20 years now. It's pretty crazy. So that is crazy. And I was going to have you guys do like a quick little like bio on how tennis started and how you got to where you are, like the very abbreviated way, because you guys went different ways. Because I know Alexa played college tennis, Asia, you did not. So if you want to do that, just kind of give a quick roundup, like how tennis started and where you went and how you're where you are now. Sure. Um, I, yes. Yeah, so I went a different route than Lex. I, Actually, growing up, thought I would go to school. Um, I verbaled to USC, but I ended up turning professional at 18 at the US Open and um, started playing since then. Dealt with a few injuries in the beginning, but I've basically been I've been on the tour since about 18. So it's been a while. Grinding. <laughs> yeah. And Alexa, talk to us about how your journey yeah. Um, so my parents both teach tennis. So I basically didn't have an option. Um, yes, yeah, so they have a club and I grew up, you know, playing tennis since I was like five years old. Um, just was super competitive from an early age. I played a lot of different sports. Um, and then, yeah, when I was probably like 10 or 11 is my parents were like, okay, you're gonna have to focus on one. And I knew I was best at tennis out of all of them. And I also knew like, you know, my best chance at going to school, like my parents wouldn't be able to pay for it. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to get a scholarship, like what's going to be my best option. And tennis was pretty easy for me that to choose that. And, um, from then on, you know, just started playing all the tournaments, all the Florida tournaments, all the national tournaments. I was traveling so much and ended up being homeschooled in middle school, um, to really focus on it. And then I started playing like the international circuit that, you know, the ITF juniors and, yeah, it was a great experience. And I just quickly realized like, you know, I would play, you know, some some challenger events at the time, you know, some pro events that I could get into. And I quickly realized that the tour for me was far away. Like I, I knew I wasn't ready for that, that life, that lifestyle. Um, I was very social. I knew I wanted, I kind of was like, okay, it's going to be you know, another level of commitment to kind of turn pro at this age. I'm not ready. I'm not mature enough for this. And um, yeah, so I ended up, you know, looking at schools when I was like 16. And um, I kind of thought I would always, it's funny, I kind of thought I would always go pro. And then once I, you know, was like, okay, I committed to Alabama. I kind of thought the dream was like dead a little bit. I was like, Oh, like, you know, I'll just go to school and probably get a job and get married. And you know, that route. And um, yeah, so I ended up going to school, you know, had a first really good two years, but like still didn't even think about pro at all, really. And then it was more my senior year, I did really, really well, made semifinals of NCAA singles and doubles and was like, okay, like, I think, you know, I might as well just give it a shot for a little bit, see how it goes. And um, yeah, I, I loved it and knew I had so much more to give in tennis. And it was, I think, you know, 
for me going to school, learning so much about like, you know, just you're, you're having to do so many different things, juggling school and workouts and your social life. And, um, it really just taught me like the things I needed to be on tour, you know, to, to, to how to, how to be a professional. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of my journey to the, to the pro tour. Nice. And uh, most of the people listening to our podcast and most of the people playing tennis at the, you know, at the recreational level that aren't professionals are playing doubles, but there's still so much surrounding pro doubles that we don't know about. So I'm going to pick your guys' brains a little bit in that regard. But Asia, I know you're still playing some singles. So tell me about how you're managing to play singles. You kind of, I saw you had a qualifying singles match recently, but then your doubles rankings like awesome and so you get straight into these other doubles tournaments talk to me about that balance right now yeah I'm still trying to figure it out it's pretty (laughs) tough um so the beginning of the year my ranking was much better but after Australian Open I actually tore my ab so and I had a lot of points to defend um after that, so January, February time, and I couldn't play at all. I was home, which was really nice because uh, we were not home a lot. And since then, um, like where my ranking was, it was it's easier to get. I was like one, like in the one forty range. It's much easier to get into doubles and singles uh, at the same tournaments, the bigger tournaments, the bigger WTAs. So that makes managing a lot easier. But now that my ranking has dropped, um, you kind of have to pick and choose. And there's, I mean, there might be a really good science to which tournaments you kind of prioritize, which I'm trying to figure that out. Um, But yeah, at the 250 that we just played in Cleveland, uh, I was able to get into both, which was really nice. But Some tournaments, you know, you're playing doubles, and if you make it to the weekend, that's when the singles for qualifying starts. So you have to choose, okay, well, semifinals of this doubles tournament, or do I go and try and play singles? Um, Sometimes it can be like that every week if you're, you know, doing well in doubles. So you have to pick and choose, or you can completely skip the doubles tournament and go play some smaller tournaments and singles to get your ranking back up. So then, you know, you're, you're playing the bigger tournaments again. Um, so it's, it's kind of been like that a lot for me. Um, obviously if your rankings, um, top hundred, or even if you get to the top 50, then it makes it much easier because depending on which tournament, you're not having to get there for qualies, um, of the next week. So that's kind of what you want to aim to be just so you can almost play a tournament full out, which kind of sounds crazy, you know, but you want to be able to finish a tournament and have the mindset that you are going to finish a tournament. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now and trying to figure out for the rest of the year, my schedule. (laughs) No, that seems so tough. It's like working a job and then having like a pretty serious side hustle because you literally, (laughs) it sounds like you're not really having a lot of days off in in that. Yeah, that too. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And Alexa, I've heard some other double specialists kind of talk about how they ended up being double specialists. But what about you? Did you start with singles and doubles? Did what made you decide to stick with the dubs? Yeah, I started with both. Um, And then yeah, I, I was always kind of in that same, you know, I was playing a lot of ITFs, obviously starting out. So I was playing singles and doubles every week, which is great, right? Like if you lose early in singles, you get more matches and doubles and vice versa, you know, and and they can help each other out. Um, And then in 2015, I tore my ACL. And so I, you know, rehab that and everything came back, um, aiming to play singles at this time, because when I hurt my ACL, I was around the same, I was around like 300 in singles and 200 in doubles, Mm -hmm. like it wasn't that big of a difference. Um, And I just immediately started having more success in doubles. I think maybe, you know, I'm not moving as much and kind of was going through the same thing as Asia where I was able to get into my doubles ranking got a little bit higher Then maybe I was missing the tournaments. I was missing qualifying because I was maybe in the doubles finals that week. And then it just quickly began where my doubles ranking just shot up way higher than my singles. I still tried for a little while when I played the WTAs to kind of sign in and qualifying and stuff. And sometimes you you could get lucky. Um, But yeah, I just quickly, you know, realized that especially with my ACL too, being I wanted to make sure that okay, doubles, I was, 
actually able to make money. It was funny because like not we didn't really know about at this time like that you could actually like be a double specialist. There right. wasn't too many out there at this time. Um, so it was kind of like a road that no one really knew about yet. And we just kind of were like making, going, making our own journey through. And, um, yeah, so that was kind of my way just to, to, to be a double specialist only. Nice. And then based on what you guys have said, it can be really hard to line up your tournaments with partners. Mm -hmm. And then we see through the season, sometimes partnerships stop and start again, or, Kind of like give us a little background and insight into how you pick your partners. Maybe you can even talk about who you started this season with, who you're playing with now. I know you guys just played a tournament together. I don't know if you're playing the U.S. Open together, but you tell me. How does that work? Um, well, so for me, because I play only doubles, I try to find like an only doubles um, partner usually. Um, I know Asia sometimes likes to play, you know, find some singles girls because they kind of have the same schedule. Um, but for me, I started the year with Letitia Chan and we played a couple tournaments together and then she wanted to play with her sister, um, which they've had, kind of always had a partnership together. So then she started playing with her and then I started playing with Aaron Routliff, who we played together a couple of years ago. So we kind of began again. Um, and yeah, we just kind of, you know, you kind of see how it goes. I mean, you aim to try to play as many tournaments as you can to give give yourself the best shot to see if it can work out. You know, because sometimes you get a couple tough draws and maybe, you know, it takes a little bit to click. Um, but you, I feel like you have to give yourself, yeah, like a, a good couple tournaments together. And Aaron and I did that and it didn't really work out too much. Um, we tried tried to make it work. But um, so now I'm playing with Monica Nicolescu. Um, she just went back to Romania for a couple weeks. So that's why Asia and I played together in Cleveland. So I'm playing with her at US Open. So nice. It, it is funny to watch. <laughs> and then it's like ironic because you guys came uh, against uh, Aaron and Gabby Dabrowski. I know. So I know. It's like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Asia, yeah. yeah. What about you, Asia? I feel like exactly what Lex said. I definitely bounce around. Like it's funny because she looks, she's looking for someone who she can play a lot of tournaments with. And for me, I feel if you are playing with someone who's only doubles, that's what they're looking for, which is great. But I can't commit to that because I want to still have the freedom to be able to play singles and to kind of do what I need. I don't want to be um, locked down. So, <laughs> I <got it. laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm playing with Caroline Dahlhide at us open, which is great. And, um, because again, she's singles is her priority. So we're, it's just kind of an understanding, which makes it really nice and, and makes it easy because obviously if say, if I, I was playing a tournament and, um, I was still in for doubles and she needs to go somewhere for singles. Like we kind of know, beforehand before signing up that she's not gonna want to play the whole thing out or I won't want to play the whole thing out so then we wouldn't even just play doubles there you know it's kind of just an understanding and it helps so that's kind of what I've been looking at and if you look this year I've played with I've been bouncing around all over the place so (laughs) um which it's 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 fine so that's kind of where I'm at right now nice and then kind of to like remove the like I don't know like curtain um, because I feel like a lot of people that know the word pro tennis, they like assume it's all like glitz and glamour. Who is your team that you travel with? And do you have a team that you travel with? Or is it like solo and you just meet up with people that you can practice with? Um, I have a coach that I travel with. Usually he lives in London. He's based in London. So he usually comes to all the bigger, bigger events with me. His name is Craig Veal. Um, I've been working with him for the past four or five years now, um, but he's he's pretty much it for me as my team. I mean, my husband will come here and there, and um, that's that's usually it. If not, I'll if if for some reason you know Craig's not able to come that week, then usually I'm either with Asia or Aaron or something. So, and then I have my coach uh, Tim Blink Iron. He's actually been my coach since I was 11 years old. So he's my main person, um, last year I had a fitness guy, like come with me the whole time. And actually Lex and I shared him some of the weeks, which was really, really good. And I, I noticed a huge help in that. Um, but he's actually moved back to Australia and he's working in Aussie rules football, 
but I'm still working with him from afar and he'll put my programs um, online and just kind of depending what I need for that day, we, we change things. So um, I find it's much easier and helps me a lot if I have someone kind of telling me what to do fitness wise and what I should do and what I should um, do for recovery. Uh, so last year it was us three, like Tim, myself and Tom uh, couch. And then this year it's just been myself and Tim and my Europe trip was very, very long. So I'm actually, (laughs) I did Wimbledon and I'll do us open just on my own, but I still talk to Tim, uh, every day. Nice. That's cool. And yeah, it's not like this whole like squad. <laughs> no, it's not an entourage of 10 for us, no. <laughs> but I do love how you guys all like connect when you're at the tournaments and you can tell that there's like bonds and friendships and respect for each other. So that's amazing. Okay, let's see. I have a bunch of generated questions from fans of yours. Here's um, a good one. How important are the intangibles, like the chemistry and communication with your partner? Yeah, I think it's really important. I mean, especially, you know, doubles, it's like all about communication. So I think just figuring out, you know, we usually play a couple practice sets before, you know, you play a tournament with your partner and you just kind of figure out the the vibe and, and you know, what they like to what they like to tell you before maybe you return or, you know, who likes to call the plays? Is it the server usually or is there one person that likes to be told what to do? And yeah, it's, it's super, super important. And um, I think just, you know, being positive and helping your partner just feel comfortable is huge for me, at least. Like, I just love my partners to make me feel like, you know, I'm doing the right thing or be open enough. They can talk to me and tell me what they think and stuff. So. <laughs> I, I agree. I am. Uh, I took on the task of coaching a high school team this season, and I keep reminding the girls that your best friend on the team might not be your best doubles partner, and like yeah. sometimes it's the person that kind of challenges you a little bit because you kind of just need. I don't know. I don't know. You just not always the same vibe works together, but sometimes it does. Like you said, you have to try it out. So yeah, exactly. And I feel like you never know, like. Yeah, it's funny, Aaron and I playing together, you think our communication so good sometimes because, you know, it is off the court. But then, you know, sometimes on court, you don't want to hurt each other's feelings. And there's things like there's so many other factors that come into play. And as women, you know, <laughs> our hormones and you just, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, you want to win. So I feel like you just have to be open and honest with your partner. So definitely. Um, here's a fun question. Speaking of partners, if you could partner with any retired player, who would it be? One for women's doubles and one for mixed. Ooh, I think I'd choose Martina Hingis. She was unbelievable at doubles. And I loved like watching her play singles. And it was kind of cool to see how her doubles career, like she won like so, so many slams after her singles career ended. What about you, Aish? I think Monica Sellis. I don't know why, but when I when okay. I was younger, I really liked watching her. I think just the two hands on both sides. Mm-hmm. It was just something yeah. different. I was like, that's really cool. Yeah. Um and then I think for my mixed partner, I think I would choose <laughs> Roger Federer. <laughs> <laughs> like who wouldn't? Because because yeah, you wouldn't have to do anything. You could just stand, not you wouldn't even need to cover your half, I feel. You could cover less than that. That's <laughs> like, true. All right, I will choose Andy Roddick because he can just serve bombs. I don't have to do anything. (laughs) Which I don't know if this is like an insider joke or I don't know. But someone asked Alexa specifically if you could pick a mixed doubles partner from Rafa, Roger, or Rios. (laughs) Which one would you pick? Okay, that's tough. I mean, obviously Rios is from Chile and he was amazing. (laughs) But I did never see him play doubles. So and he's a little <laughs> heated. <laughs> That's true. I'd probably choose who's the better doubles player between Roger and Rafa. Roger and Rafa. I mean, Ra- Rafa with the lefty serve really, really can get get tricky. But I mean, it's hard to turn down Roger. I'd go with Roger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all agree on that one. Okay, Team Roger. <laughs> we'll battle for that one. That partner. Um, what is the best? part of playing doubles on tour and what is the worst part of playing doubles on tour Hmm. Hmm, that's a good question right (laughs) I think the best part is it's nice being out there with someone right like you're when you're out there playing and competing like you're not alone like you know that like you have someone that like has your back and like you can talk like whatever you go through on court you're gonna go through together whether it's good or bad 
So I think that part, it's it's always really good to experience that. The worst part, I mean, I don't I even know. know. The worst part. Maybe sometimes the worst part, we're, like, we're so used to just being individual that sometimes maybe that you have a teammate, you're like, eh, maybe I just <laughs> wish I was out here by myself. I know. I just had this conversation about how selfish tennis players are and myself. Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes, yeah, you know, and – when you're arranging your your warm ups, it's not just what time you want to hit; it's also what time your partner wants to hit. Um, but I would agree with Lex. It's it's nice, you know, having someone else out there and and not doing it just for yourself. But then sometimes it is nice to just be by yourself. That's what I feel. I guess the worst part is if you had a bad partner who like kind of blamed you and was like negative and like mean and stuff. That would mean be on court. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would suck. Um, Okay, so changing changing subjects. Someone asked you guys for keys to a good return, and you both have amazing returns. So what are your keys? Give us some tips and tricks. I'd say to make sure you're moving forward. Like, you don't want to get stuck, especially after the split step. Make sure you're always moving forward. That's something that helps me a lot. Yeah, I think definitely not guessing. Sometimes, like, I get, you know, someone serves the same spot all the time. Just don't get into the habit of guessing. And I think just staying low for me, it's like staying low and moving forward, like a combination of what Asia said. Awesome. And then I've got a couple funny ones. Like, can you hit a tweener? <laughs> oh my I've actually God. been practicing my tweener. I've gotten so much better. Yeah. So I, I will say I can now. Before it was pretty tragic and I looked just like such a girl trying to do it. Just like so girly. Um, but now I'm I, I can do it. I definitely cannot do it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> You're not alone. Um, let's see. This one was interesting. If you could only volley to once or on one side of your body, which side would you pick and why? <laughs> hmm. Like forehand or backhand probably like that maybe? Yeah, I guess like your forehand volley or your backhand volley. Which And you can only do that for the rest of your life. <laughs> I'd go forehand. I think I'd go backhand, honestly. You can do yeah. like more things. Yeah. yeah. I think I would I think I would go backhand volley. Nice. Your backhand volley is good, so. <laughs> yeah. You guys both have amazing volleys, but Asia, <laughs> I was just recently wa- rewatching some of your videos and like someone there were like some awesome comments and it was like she's perfect and I'm like, "I know, but really like <laughs> Um, also, I'm pretty sure like your aunt or uncle commented and we're like That's so proud hilarious. of you. It was oh so Oh my cute. gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> and like Alexa, I feel like you've also had family members comment. It's really cute. Like, I don't know if they're just like trying to keep up with you and then like a YouTube video pops up yeah. from Dennis Warehouse. <laughs> That's so funny. It's adorable. I love it. Um, let's see. Okay. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about gear. I know, um, Not like anything crazy. We're not going to get too far in the weeds. But you guys both have very very unique and stylish on-court fashion choices. And you're not wearing the typical like Nike head-to-toe or Adidas head-to-toe. So tell me what brands you like right now and what you like wearing on the court to feel confident. I feel like we're pretty similar. I think we wear Uh, like the same thing. Yeah. Um, For a while, I I mean, I have my clothing line with my friend Kimmy. which is it's lemons and laundry, which I have a dress um, from there that I love to wear, but I haven't really been wearing that. I've just strictly been wearing Lulu lemon on court, um, which I think Lex can agree with. It's just really comfortable. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of options. Um, And then I'm Nike shoes, which I'm still kind of playing around with but for the most part I I'm I'm wearing Nike well we can talk about your shoe we're going to talk about both your guys' shoes too yeah. so uh, Asia's wearing the GP turbo still because they keep kind of like dropping a little little GP turbos here and yeah, there such a tease they'll like sprinkle something and then they take it away um so I know I feel like I need to find something kind of like that or maybe something even a little more narrow uh, because my feet are pretty narrow, but I do love Nike. So 
Michelle, maybe you can help me <laughs> with that. Well, it is, I need to pick your brain. Yeah. And like y- the GP Turbo has a cult following. So you're not alone. And like every time people see you wearing it, they're like, where did she get those? <laughs> but like for the record, anyone listening, we have stock of them right now. So buy now. For the US Open, they just launched. I don't know if you saw it. It's a, like a bodega collection so it has like little like um snack foods that you would buy at one of the new york bodegas on it it's, it's oh wow kind of, it's kind oh, of wow. it's kind of weird it's like brown <laughs> and then it has like like chips and I, i'll show it to you I'll yeah send i need it. to see that um, okay. it's definitely unique but they were doing like a little call out to the u.s open um but the the closest shoe that comes to mind which i've now sent this to a couple players and i know sabrina santa maria and caitlin christian wear it is the mizuno wave exceed two or five because it's like more narrow it's still durable and it's got good cushioning so you might have to try it might have to try okay it. interesting and then Alexa, you you can talk yeah. about your on court style, but then we'll go to yeah. your shoes. <laughs> so I'm the, I'm the same. I wear Lululemon. I've been wearing it for a while now. I just like she said, I it's so comfortable. I also really like. I mean, I think more players are wearing it now because of um, Layla, obviously sponsored by Lululemon. But I think that's another reason I love it. Is like I feel like it's not the same typical thing you see every girl wearing the same kit. You know, all the Adidas or Nike or you know fila or something so i love it just being able to like have my colors and mix and match and choose you know and and we have so many that maybe for a couple weeks i'll bring certain colors and then the next couple weeks i'll bring other colors and yeah they're just really comfortable and i I love their dresses so i wear their dresses a lot um and my shoes i wear the vapor i used to wear the so i wear the vapor pros right is that the one that i wear right now and then (laughs) you just sent me a shipment of the vapor the new one the 11 yes i think is that right yeah yeah i will be finishing the rest of my vapor pros i have i still have a couple more pairs left so i know because i know they have discontinued those so i will be using those but i'll be the new ones you'll have to you'll have to let me know how the vapor 11s are lex yeah, I will. Me too. I haven't actually play tested them. I have a like a pair of a men's version, and I haven't worn the women, so I'd be curious too. But the men well, love it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've seen. I mean, I think they look great. So <laughs> they look really cool. I personally don't love the newest iteration of the Vapor Pro, so I'm I'm like pro putting you in the 11s but, <laughs> okay. but also I was like I don't know um just because I know they're a little more stable so yeah but that's not a bad thing no and should be a little more cushioned hopefully yeah, yeah. that's what I want to know they look they look more cushioned yeah so. yeah and they just look cool <laughs> so yeah. that's awesome um let's talk about rackets a little bit Asia you <laughs> when we saw you at BMP you were like <laughs> I feel like this might be a common thread in the in the life of Asia yeah. Muhammad this year. Yes. We're not sure. <laughs> but you were like, do I need a V core? Do I need to go back to a V core? Should I try the 98? Should I try the 95? And I yeah. What where are you at with your racket right now? <laughs> so right now I'm using a 98 E-Zone. And actually Jessica Pagula came and saved the day because before I went to Europe. I use my rackets, but I put weight on them, like do a lot of customization to it. And uh, Jesse uses the same racket. So she actually sent me a bunch of her old ones that she wasn't using anymore just because I didn't have time to get them weighted before leaving. So I'm still using those. It's funny because she'll see me. She's like, oh my gosh, you're still using the rackets. I'm like, yeah, I haven't had time to do anything. So currently I'm actually using her rackets. But I think, and I feel like you won't be surprised, Michelle, but I think I'm going to go back to uh, the E-Zone, but the 100. So that's where I'm at right Stay now. Tuned. <laughs> Don't quote me. It could be changing in a few months. That's all good. Um, out of curiosity, do you know or are you willing to share like the spec that you do play with with the added weight? Because uh, there have been a lot of questions about that. Honestly, I, do- I don't know. I had a racket that I got done um, from someone who customized my rackets and he lived in Australia. And now I'm using a different guy. His name is Nate Ferguson. Um, And I just sent that racket to him and said, can you match this? So I don't, I don't know exactly. I want to say 300 and 
15 grams, but that, that could tracks. be very wrong. <laughs> that so may, that would make sense. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> way more than I know about my racket. <laughs> Alexa, um, so. Yeah, so, and I think I have it in like my racket head and I think it's pretty even, but again, don't quote me. Um, trans- Transferring the question to Alexa, I just love. <laughs> Because, like, I'm going to say it's the blonde. And I can say that because I'm blonde and I do this all the time. <laughs> but I also, I went back just because, like, I was, like, looking for questions on some of the videos that you guys have done. And you, on one of your videos, you say, like, oh, I customize it. And, like, it, I added a couple ounces. And, like, the, like a couple <laughs> ounces would be, like, massive. <laughs> like, a massive change. Like, that'd be, like, going from, like, a light racket to, like, a Roger. Oh, like, so, <laughs> Thanks for calling me out. You're welcome. <laughs> but, like, I say stuff like that all the time, so it's, like, very relatable. <laughs> yeah. But, anyways, I know that you are using the Ultra, and you've got the beautiful – like, we're, like, in love with your racket because it's all shiny and beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's so pretty. Yeah, the Ultra Pro Tour is what I use. Which is like um, one of those Wilson Lab beautiful rackets that yeah. yes they make just for you guys, which is awesome. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, I'm just very much. I've always been this way. I don't really know much about my racket. I just know it feels good to me. Um, but yeah, I just get them weighted basically where I get them all the same weight. Um, so whenever the Wilson sends me the rackets, because I think a lot of people don't know this, and I mean I didn't even know this from even a couple of years ago that. When whatever rackets that they make, they even can be they 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 come to you differently, right? They're all different, a little bit weighted differently. Where not by ounces, but a couple grams, I guess, different. Um, so I'll ship them off, and they'll send them back to me. I'm gonna weight it and make sure that they're all just the even weight, so they're all the same, so nothing too crazy. That way, if I break a string in one racket, and I get another racket that the you know they're all kind of they're all the same. Definitely. And then you can, if you're listening and you're a normal person like me, you can use our MRT service for that same thing. So we will match, we'll match specs or we will bring your spec up to what you want it. So definitely something that is worth realizing. We have people that will like buy rackets, they demoed and they'll buy the rackets and then they'll be like, wait, this doesn't feel the same. And it's like, well, it could be a little different. So that's worth knowing. What about strings? What strings are you guys using? Yeah, so string, I actually just switched. I used to use the Lux Smart string. Right. Um, and they actually discontinued it. So I knew I was going to have to switch. And I was having a little bit of shoulder problems. Um, I switched to it originally. I switched to that before I had, I was using the 4G and I felt like I was breaking it a lot. I wanted something a little bit easier on the shoulder. So I went to the Lux Smart. Um, and so now I'm using actually, I'm using the Alu Power 125 in my main and then the Cross the Sensation. Oh, nice. And I feel like it's a lot easier. I'm getting like easier power than before. Um, yeah. And I feel like I'm stringing it a little bit lower. Um, but yeah, I really, I like the mix right now a lot. I feel like it's, it's a lot easier on my shoulder. So I just switched um, for grass season. So only a couple months ago. And I'm using the Yonix Polytour Rev. Um, it comes in a few colors. I'm using the orange right now. It's very bright. And I like it. I like it a lot. But I also think I want to – so a couple of years ago <laughs> – She wants to change. I, I was like, I, I thought you used to use Polytour Pro, but <laughs> – Yeah, no, I've actually used it for a while. Okay. But um, I've also used Natural Gut before, which I really enjoyed, and I think it – it was really good for my game. So I might mess around with that too. Yeah. Stay tuned. I remember. I remember in December <laughs> there were some yes. natural guts. <laughs> it's it's good though, because like you represent two very specific kinds of consumers that we have. Someone that's always like kind of like, what else maybe? And yeah. then someone that's like tried and true. She's like exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> I, there's like the commitment, no commitment. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny i love it um what else let's just wrap it up with some fun things like what is your favorite thing to do while you're off the court you're still maybe at a tournament but like what does a day off look like for me i'm just i think well even if i'm with lex uh or any other any like some of my other friends i just want to go and find some really good food especially depends where we are in the cities like we're so excited for new york we're already making reservations and looking up places where to go um i'm a pretty big foodie so 
that's what I'm that's what I'm into. Day off, I just want to go crush some good food. Nice. Yeah, hundred percent. That's the same here. You know, I feel like we are so lucky that we get to travel to some amazing cities in the world, and they're you know known for food, all these different different types of food and cuisines. And we, you know, we are. It's so funny. Like we're open to everything. We love to try new things, and um, yeah, we just love love looking at what the best spots are, and um, love love going to those. So nice. Um, what about, have you had any heartbreak this year? And then flip side, what has been something that's been a highlight this year? And like the heartbreak, like tennis court heartbreak. We don't need to like, no, we're not talking about like, (laughs) we're not going that deep. Tennis heartbreak. Like, yeah. Oh gosh. Me and Aaron, like one of our, it was like our second tournament together. We lost to Coco and Jesse in Madrid, seven six seven six. It was a pretty. It was a heartbreaker. It was so close. Well fought match. Um, and then, wait, what was the other question? Or what was a highlight? Oh, highlight. Yeah, <laughs> counterbalance it. Hmm, there haven't been too many highlights for me this year. <laughs> the best is yet to come. U.S. Open, watch yeah. out. <laughs> D.C. D.C. made finals with Monica Nicolescu. We had a really good week, had some good wins, and that's that was one of my highlights. I'll say my highlight was the beginning of the year in Oz. I won uh, the 500 in Adelaide with Tay. That was really, really good just to start the year off. <laughs> and then – Heartbreak was, I'd say French Open for and mixed. We had uh, match points to make it to the semis and just oh. yeah, like oh, no. the points too. One of it was a you know I probably got a little tentative, could have gone for, gone for the volley, but then my partner missed the the forehand volley, um, and then it was tied because it was a ten point tiebreaker, and then it was tied. And I missed an overhead and like, I don't like, I back my overhead. I I back that for a lot. And I mean, I completely butchered this overhead, like (laughs) bottom of the ground. And that would have given us another match point. And then just having those videos on your phone too. It's like, just don't watch them. I had to delete it. I had to delete it off my phone because I was just torturing myself. So even talking about that now, that I, that's still, I think, heartbreak. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, kidding. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That sucks. Um, we'll quickly change the subject, but kind of keep it the same. You brought up mixed doubles. I, we've talked a little bit about mix. Are you guys playing mix at the U.S. Open? And how do you go about choosing your mix partner? Because it's literally like four times a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. It's, it's, and it, the cuts have been so tough lately. My rankings dropped a little bit. So I'm just going to be on site trying to find someone to get in. I don't have any commitments right now. I'm open. So if anyone's listening to this, it's looking. <laughs> Slide into <laughs> her looking for a partner. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm free. I'm single on the mix tour right now. <laughs> um, I've actually played with Lloyd Glasspool. Uh, a lot this year and he's fun to play with I started playing with him last year at French Open um and it's nice because we prioritize doubles obviously but and then mix is just like a good time and for US Open I'm actually playing with Jackson Withrow who he's been killing it lately and it's it'll be fun to play with an American so I'm excited that's awesome well, I think now that we've brought up the worst and the best parts of your year, I'm like, I'm done with you. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, thanks so much for having us. We appreciate it. It was awesome. Thank you guys for joining. Do you want to plug your socials or where people can keep up with your journeys along the way? Yeah, they can follow me at a Garachi at on Instagram. Yeah, and you can follow me at Asia.Muhammad on Instagram. And just a fun fact, Asia has her clothing line, so you can go check out her clothes, and we'll link to your website. And then Alexa's family has wine, which I think is the coolest thing ever. (laughs) So you can go buy some Garachi wine while you're watching her. (laughs) Yeah, and it's in Napa, not too far from you guys. Not too far, just a couple hours. Yeah. Awesome, ladies. You're so fun to talk to, and I'm wishing you all the luck for the rest of the year, and kick some butt out there on the court. And thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for having us, Michelle. This is so fun. Yay. (laughs) Thanks, you guys. 